Why don't we all stand up and clap our hands and welcome both of them and welcome yeah, okay. So enjoy WAMI at Ministries World Ally Ministry International. You know what me means. In our Tamil wa means come. Me, me, me. Wa me, Keith. <laughs> Easy to remember. Wa me, Keith. He's a young, energetic man in the mid 30s. He's going to revive you, put a shoe, spring in your shoe, like your pastor has always spring in his shoes. <laughs> and uh, my wife, Mercy Rebecca, <clears throat> about three months ago, she went to sleep, and the, her angel came and changed her address. She's in heaven now. Very powerful singer. <clears throat> Very devout servant of God. Everywhere I go, she was there. Nobody has seen me alone. It's the first time I'm coming alone. <laughs> and uh, one Hindu, MLA candidate came to my house. He's going to come at 10, 10 30 service. Amazing. Everybody is inquiring, oh, sad. Sure, I feel sad. She's gone. And uh, this man came and said, Your wife didn't die. <laughs> Hindu man. He said, She was traveling with you in the plane. <laughs> I tell you. She's here, but you don't see. And I said, that's a message I gave in Messenger. He hasn't read it. To tell you an interesting thing, booking ticket in December is very tough, especially with the football game going in the Middle East. Millions and millions travel. Very difficult to get seat. So my travel agents, while talking, sir, I see one seat, Airbus 380, big, big plane. One seat I see, can I click it, otherwise it will be gone. People are booking it, it will go anytime. So it is fully loaded, no seat. I went there, is there any upgrade business class? No sir, business class is full, even first class is full, $10,000 ticket is full. <laughs> so I travel, I came into that airplane in New York, JFK, and I looked at my seat 73. <laughs> And uh, the air hostess said, this is a full packed flight, no room. I went to the seat. I looked at 73 and sat. And nobody came to the seat next to me. <laughs> Who was traveling with me? My wife. An unbelievable thing. Amazing thing. Because I always say, a lot of people around the world ask me, your wife, I, too bad, but do you know he, she's in heaven? Yeah. I'm happy, at the same time, I'm, I'm a little sad, she's not there. <laughs> and uh, we were like one soul living in two bodies. She was not only my wife, how we were getting along so much, 53 years of marriage, no quarrel, nothing, you know. I treated my wife as my friend. <laughs> Try that. I just put one line, how powerful she's singing, just one line. <laughs> told the doctor she's a powerful singer. She's singing to 25 lakhs in North India. The doctor said, you are a singer. She said, I can sing now. She sang a song in the emergency room.
Praise God. <laughs> Since she never died, I keep her singing in my pocket. Hmm. So today you are going to enjoy Wang Mi Keith. Everybody, please rise your feet. Give a good hand clap. <laughs> Next service, I'm going to preach. You need to hear the first message last service. I'm going to tell you where it is written, Jesus is coming next year, September. I'll show you, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to be here this morning. Uh, <clears throat> before we share the word, I just want to appreciate our Father, Reverend Dr. John Paul for this opportunity once more and uh, I want to appreciate him so much. He has opened me a lot to the world. I'm traveling around. He's sending me around Africa. I'm actually his vice president in Africa for the work he's doing in Africa. He's got a burden for the African work and so I've been to some nations and so he invited me to be here for the memorial service that is coming up on the 27th for mom and uh, other things and meetings that we are to have. Amen. I also want to thank God for Pastor Thompson. Yeah, it's a privilege meeting you. There's just a connection, you know, with the worship. I was just carried away in the spirit, you know. I'm a worshiper, so I, I love a lot of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Once more, can we just thank God for this one opportunity. Father, we just thank you. We bless your name. We appreciate you for the opportunity and the, the grace that you have released upon us this morning. Thank you for the love you have for us. Thank you for the insight of the revelations of the word that you release to us every day of our lives. We just bless your name. We just thank you, Father. We just exalt your name because we believe in you. We believe in your word. We believe that we are lost and we are lost without you. We are lost without you. But we thank you because we are found in Christ. We are found in you. Our lives become relevant. We have the relevance to be in you. We have the knowledge and the ability to stand because you're standing. Thank you for this morning. And Lord, we pray that as your word comes this morning, heal somebody this morning, deliver somebody this morning, restore someone who came here depressed, who came here with some heavy burden in their mind. We begin to ask for your touch this morning. We ask that your presence will come this morning and restore someone here this morning we thank you holy spirit have your way this morning and glorify yourself in the lives of your people this morning we invite you once more again that your presence lord will fill this atmosphere and we shall be revived we will be revived in our spirit in our mind in our thoughts in the revelation of your word that we will grow from glory to glory and from dimension to dimension lord thank you for your healing power thank you Lord for the resurrection power thank you because we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit we believe in the power of the resurrection and we know that you're coming again and we're going to catch up with you right there as you return we give you praise Father ah, hallelujah hallelujah oh Jesus My God, that burden and your hurt that is trying to weigh you down, the Lord is taking it off right now. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning right now. It's a new beginning. Someone, I, I, I just feel there is there's some heaviness in your spirit. Can we just stand on our feet, every one of us, wherever we are? I just I just feel that this service is going to be an unusual service. And, and the Lord just wants to do something this morning in the life of someone here. I just believe that there's going to be a transformation this morning. Can we, can we take the song, I'm lost without you, Pastor? Can we just, can we everyone stand? Can we just stand on our feet, everyone, this morning and, and take that song in the next few minutes as, as before I minister the word and, and we, just, we just worship him once more. Wherever you are, just stand on your feet. I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you, I'm lost. I'm desperate for you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I'm 
lost without you. I'm lost without you. I'm desperate for you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm lost without you. Yes, Lord, we are lost without you, Father. Oh, desperate for we are desperate you. for you this morning, Father. We need you in our hearts, in our minds. In our lives we need I'm you lost we lost you. we lost we lost without you father oh. i'm desperate for Thank you Lord. i'm lost without you I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. I'm desperate for you. Someone, we're just desperate for you, Lord. Wherever you are, lift your hands and just I'm desperate for your presence, Lord. Lord is healing someone right now. Depression. Depression. The spirit of depression is leaving someone right now. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. The spirit of depression leaves your body right now. In the name of Jesus. Let joy. Let the fullness of joy come into your spirit. Let the fullness of joy come into your spirit. Let the fullness of joy, let the fullness of joy come into your spirit this morning. Let there be a restoration. Let there be a restoration in your spirit this morning. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can just stay with the key. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's share the word this morning. Can we just look at the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. 
God is so faithful, Pastor. God is so faithful. Because worship is actually what we're going to do. And we keep doing it. And that's why there are days I go to church and I just worship. And sometimes I don't even have time to preach the word. We just worship and we go home. Because there's something about worship. You're, you're lost in the spirit. And, and the burdens and the things that try to weigh you down. You know, we're living in a world where a lot of things try to wear our spirit down. There are times you're driving out of the house and driving into the street and then you begin to see funny things happening around and then it, it tries to break your heart. But when you keep an atmosphere of worship, even in the cars, you're driving, you know, there, there, there's a restoration that begins to take place in your subconscious mind. And then you begin to feel a different atmosphere, even though you're on earth, but something is happening in the atmosphere in which you are. Because in your ride, in your car, as you're driving, you begin to experience the presence of God. And one of the things I believe we need right now, more than ever, that the church and the whole world needs is the presence of God. When that presence goes with you and it carries you around and, and, and surrounds everything that you're doing, it doesn't matter the tribulations of life that we face, you overcome them. And that's why Paul begins to say, this gospel that we preach, we preach by faith. For the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are preaching the gospel and that this gospel will be preached to the ends of the earth. We need to build the faith of men and to make men understand that they have nothing than to put their trust and the faith in Christ. Faith is the key. We are living in the in a time generation where we are in the generation of faith. You know, the Israelites operated under the grace generation because they, they had free food and everything that God could release. But we, right now, we're in a generation of faith because we believe in him by faith. We walk with him by faith. We live by faith. We stand up by faith. You go to your work by faith and you act on the faith. And then you begin to see him operate and does miracles because he dwells in us. He lives in us. Christ lives right there. He's, he's right there with you. He's inside of you. His presence, his power is inside of you. And that's why you just have to believe and know that what he has spoken concerning your life will come to pass. The enemy can't stop you. The devil has no power to stop you. No force, no, no enchantment, no divination has the power to stop you. Because why? Christ dwells in you. Christ lives in you. He's right there with you. Can you lift your hands and shout hallelujah? You carry him in you. He's right there. He's right there. Can we read Romans? Yes, sir. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Yeah, you can read, Pastor. You can read. So that we can understand together. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what does it say? Yes. The word is near you. Yes. In your mouth and yes. in your heart. <laughs> the word is near you. Yes. In your mouth and where? Can the church respond to me? In your mouth and where? In your heart. So your mouth is the weapon for this generation. There is nothing that is as powerful like your words. That's why the Bible says death and life lies in the power of the tongue. You know, what goes into a man like you eat has the power to keep the body alive. But what comes out of you when you speak has the power to determine your future. So your words reveal what you become. And now Romans is saying here that the word is right inside of us. In our mouths. And so when you eat the word by reading the word, the word becomes alive in you. And so whenever you meet a desperate situation or a dead person or a dead situation, you speak life. So your mouth is supposed to be a blessing to people. Your mouth is supposed to bring life to any situation that seems to be like it's blocking. And so this morning, I want you to live here with that concept and that belief that whatever may be negative around you because of your presence and because of the word of God that is inside of you you have the power to bring life in that situation so even a dead person your presence can bring back the person alive how many of you believe you can bring back the dead to life can I see your hands right up shout hallelujah 
you have the power right in your mouth to bring every desperate situation to bring everyone that looks dead there are men that are moving but they are dead sir there are men that are moving why because they don't have the spirit of god in their life they don't have the word of life that you have they believe they can do things by their power and by their ability but they don't have the understanding that christ has done everything for us and because we have christ in us we have the power to do all things because in him all things are possible shout hallelujah let's go ahead sir the next word that is the word of faith which we preach that is the word of faith which i'm preaching right now paul says which we preach but right now i'm preaching the word of faith so the word encourages you the word builds you up the word inspires you that is why our conversations and the things that we speak or declare within our community within our homes within our families should exalt the name of jesus hallelujah your words should bring life into any desperate situation so we have to keep on preaching because why bible says faith comes by what hearing and hearing the words of faith so it takes a man who is filled with the word to speak the word of life because you can only give what you have if you don't have the word in you you can you can you can give out the word to people and so you got the power to be able to speak so it doesn't matter the doctors may have tell you oh this situation is, is very frightening and we, we don't seem like there is hope in this situation but when a man of faith comes in he says there is hope because Jesus says there is healing in his name hallelujah and so you don't operate by the results that have been given to you which is the negative result you operate by the word of faith that says all things are possible and so Paul is saying here in Romans that we ought to speak the word of faith. We ought to preach the word of faith. We ought to encourage one another because he knows what we will go through. You know, when we talk about tribulations, it's not only when Christ has raptured the church and gone, but there are tribulations of life. The, the trials and, and the, the, the challenges and the things we go through every blessed day of our life, they are, they are called tribulations of life. But we overcame them by the blood of the lamb hallelujah and so the blood of the lamb has given us the ability to overcome any situation that looks impossible you have that power in you can somebody raise your hands and say i have the power of jesus in me my god can you shout it loud i have the power of christ right here in me once more leave your hands in jesus name i can heal the sick i can raise the dead that same power is working in me. Shout hallelujah. That same power is in you. So, cancer has the power to bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. HIV has the power to bow at the mention of the name of That is why the devil tried everything to stop the church during coronavirus. And they thought they were going to obstruct the church. But God gave the idea and the church expanded through Zoom meetings. And, and today, many are saved in their homes. Shout hallelujah. And so, the devil tries to do everything to stop the church. But the church is waxing stronger. We live by faith. We walk by faith. We stand by faith. We believe the word by faith. And we know that that word that is right in us will bring that which God has promised concerning our lives. Hallelujah. There's a promise. Sir. There's a promise. Yes, sir. That what? If you confess with your mouth yes. the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart yes. that God has raised him from the dead, yes. you will be saved. If you do what? Confess with your mouth. Somebody shout, my mouth has power. My God, can you shout it loud? My mouth has power. So right now, can you repeat after me? So right now, I speak life to any situation that seems dead in my life. You have the power. I want you to leave here this morning with the consciousness and, and the belief that your words 
can bring life to any situation. A lot of believers and a lot of Christians, you know, they have the ability and sometimes when we go through some challenges and some things, we, we speak negative. But I've learned by faith and, 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 and connecting with, 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 with Dr. John Paul, he, he has made me to believe so much in words. And I understand that my words can bring life. My words can bring life into a situation. I remember we had a challenge and, and you know, there was some crisis going on right now. It's going on in our city. And, you know, people were running. They were killing a lot of people. And when I called Daddy John Paul, he said, keep speaking life. That was when we started building. We just built the 1,500 seaters. We're still working on it. And, and people were like, how are you doing it? I said, we're speaking life into the situation. We, and, and sometimes the shooting and the killing will come close to where we are, but they can't get to the church. And I said, the church has become the tabernacle of Jesus. And the presence of God is in this place. So this is a rescue place for men to come to hide so that their lives can be preserved. So I want you to understand you have the presence of God right there with you. Hallelujah. It's there with you. Right in your room. Right in your bathroom. Right in your kitchen where you are cooking. You have his presence. Why? The power of your words have power to bring life. Amen. You know, I, I have this concept where there was a story of a young man who went and caught the fish from the sea. And so when he brought the fish, he kept it somewhere in a container in the house. And so the little kid went and was playing. And so the mother was watching at the child play. And so after some time, he came back to look at the fish. And he realized that the fish was dead. And so he asked the mom, why did this fish die? And the mom said, the environment that God created the fish was for the fish to live in water. And so, the fish now has been brought out of water. So, they, they, what sustains the fish is water. And as long as there is no water, the fish cannot survive. And so the mother told him, as long as you don't have Christ and believe in his work and believe in the finished work of Jesus, you have no life. You're living a life on earth which is a borrowed life until the day you come to realize that Christ is the only way, is the truth, and the life. And that was how the young man was able to understand what Christ did for us. So, your environment out of Christ is dangerous. But in Christ, your environment becomes safe. Because why? Christ has created a platform for us. And when we step in that platform, our lives are preserved. So someone here, you are preserved in the name of Jesus. I say you are preserved in the name of Jesus. Your life has a meaning in the fullness of the meaning in Christ. You cannot survive the times in which we are out of the presence of God. We are in a time where we need the presence of God like never before. I repeat it again. And that is why I love the atmosphere of the English service, the worship atmosphere. You feel God. And, and I believe our pastor, Pastor Thomas, has created that atmosphere to worship God. You don't only have to wait for the pastor to lay hands on you. But you can step into the church with faith. And there is a, a burden that you have. And in the atmosphere of worship, you can lift your hands and you ask the Lord to carry away that burden from you. And I'm telling you, by the time you're walking out of this atmosphere, you begin to see a lot of things happening. And you see breakthroughs, and you see open doors, and even there are accidents and things that would have come your way, the Lord will always divert you out of it. Lift your hands and shout hallelujah. So our life is preserved in him. I want you to have that understanding. Your life has safety in Christ. Your life is productive in Christ. Your life has a meaning when Christ becomes the light of your destiny. Once more, let's finish that place as I round up. Yes, sir. Rounding up very soon. Yeah, yeah verse 10. Verse 10. <clears throat> For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. Yes. And with the mouth, confession is made. Good. Unto salvation. Good. For the scripture says, who believes on him 
will not be put to shame. He who believes on him will not be put to shame. Somebody shout, I will not be put to shame. Because I believe in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So, if you look at the scripture as we round up, you will see that everything is tied to the heart, to the mouth, to your faith level and belief. So, the entire scripture always connects with our mouth, our heart, our thoughts. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> Casting down every evil imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Which means anything that wants to exalt itself in your life called sickness, you have the power to cast it out. So if there is a disease that is trying to exalt itself over your family, over your destiny, you have the power to speak life and call forth those things that are not as if they were. You have the ability to call forth the blessings of God upon you your life whenever you see that things are not working the way they are supposed to be you have the power to call for the blessings of God in your business in your family over your children over your career you have the power somebody shout I have the power in my mouth it's right there right in your mouth right there so as you end the year 2022 into 2023, you should have the concept that between now and the end of the year, all your desires for 2022 can be fulfilled. God can bring the dreams and the plans you had to do this year that sometimes you're looking like, have I fulfilled them? They can be fulfilled within a few days. And right now, as I speak to someone here, that dream, that vision, that plan will come to pass in the name of Jesus. We have the power. Nothing is impossible. You can step out right now as I'm speaking. You can walk out of the church as you're moving. And I'm telling you, you encounter an angel and a miracle happens right there. And as I'm speaking, God is sending angels right now from the east, from the west, from the south. And they're coming towards your way. I see angels coming right now. I see angels are coming your way. Something is happening right now in the life of someone. God is changing your life. God is changing your situation. God is turning things around. Wherever there was a blockage, I command an opening right now in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. There's an opening right now. Lift your hands to him. I just want you to use your weapon, which is your mouth, and begin to speak to every door that looks like it was locked. Open it right now. Someone just lift your hands. Open the eyes of my heart. Pastor, can we take the song? Can the musicians come up, come up, come up, come up, please? We, are, we want to open some doors right now as I round up. I want to see you. <laughs> See you I am lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love We sing holy, holy, holy I want to see you Open the eyes of my Come on, let's go Open the eyes of my heart I wanna see you. Let's go. Hey. I wanna see you. Hey. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I wanna see you. Hey. I wanna see you. See you, Lord. See you higher, lifted up, shining in the light of your glory.
believe that the word has come and you know that there is power in your words you have the power to speak whatever you want to speak and to see life in that situation and so this morning father I join my faith with your servant here this morning and your people that are here this morning to speak over their lives and to declare that the doors that were locked against you are open in the name of Jesus they are open in the name of Jesus. They are open in the name of Jesus. They are open in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. They are open. They are open. They are open. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They are open. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They are open. They are open. They are open. Thank you, Father. Financial doors. I hear in my spirit right now. The Lord says He's going to take away debt from someone. I, I see a huge breakthrough coming for someone to overcome a financial challenge. The Lord is going to bless you and send men into your life that will be a great blessing to your life right now in the name of Jesus. Healing. Every area of your body where you felt pain. And you were feeling depressed and you were feeling confused and you were feeling like life is weighing down on you i declare and i decree that burden is being lifted off your shoulder right yes. now in the name of jesus jesus name jesus, in the name of jesus thank you father thank you lord thank you holy spirit every negative idea dreams fear that spirit is leaving you right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Fear, fear, yeah. fear leaves you right now. All things are possible. All things are possible. We bless your name. We bless your name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. <laughs> Worship his holy name. Heard that 
I was I'm telling the pastor, I said, can you give me permission to pray? And if you're one of those people trusting God by faith, I just want you to step in front with me. Yes. I just want to agree with pastor yes. and we're going to pray for you, pastor. You come. Pray. Yes. Yes. come quickly. There isn't just time. come. Yes, come and line up. Thank you, Father. Amen. Just line up. We're just going to pray for you. We're going to trust God with you for a divine shift. Yes, you can come on stage so that it'll be easy. It's, it's going to be a divine shift. Thank you, Father. Woo. I feel an anointing here right now this morning. <laughs> we bless your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As you're coming, I want you to put your faith in the word. Trust the Lord because he's about to do something in your life. There's going to be a divine shift. I'm telling you, yes. there's going to be a shift in your life. Amen. Yes, yes. Holy are you, Lord? All creations call you, Lord. Worthy it's your name. We worship your holy name. Awesome God, how great thou art. He's a great God. You are a great God. Lord, these are your people here. They are believing for a, a shift in their lives. Yes. And so, Lord, as we lay hands and pray for them, we ask for a divine touch, yes. a divine visitation. You know them by their names and by their faces and by what they are going through. And so we come to you this morning. And we are just asking, like, this will be a fresh opening. I, I see angels opening doors right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see doors being opened right now. Someone is coming out of the chains. My God, the chains that break you, you're coming out right now. You're breaking out of chains. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.